One of the really amazing things about BigML is just how fast it can train a predictive model. And to demonstrate this, uh, I'm going to start with raw data uh, that I'm downloading from Kaggle. Uh, this is data provided by StumbleUpon as part of a contest to uh, predict the class of a web page. I'm just going to start downloading this here. This data set, which is about 21 megs, uh, contains 7,400 web pages, and including the text of the web page and also a bunch of different attributes of the web page. And the goal is to predict whether a given web page is either evergreen or ephemeral. An evergreen would be something like a recipe website uh, that's of ongoing interest. Ephemeral would be something like a blog post uh, that's of fleeting interest that goes stale after a couple of days. So I've downloaded my data, and I'm going to start the clock. So I'm going to upload this data set to BigML. Again, it's 21 megabytes. It doesn't take long. And now we've uploaded it, and I'm just going to click. And it shows me my data source. And you can see all the fields that were in that uh, file from Kaggle, including this field called boilerplate, which is basically the text of the web page. We've got a bunch of different fields, including this last one, which is the label we're trying to predict, which is a zero if that web page is ephemeral and a one if that web page is evergreen. So I'm just going to do one click model. And BigML is going to analyze this data. Uh, that we've just uploaded and train a predictive model on it. And there we go. And this model is telling me that I've got uh, some interesting patterns in my data set. First of all, I can see that if I look at 100% of the data, it's about 50-50 between the two classes. About 50% class 0, which is ephemeral, 50% class 1, which is evergreen. And the first distinction that the model makes in this tree is whether the text of the website contains the word recipe more than once. If it does, then 90% of those web pages are going to be class 1, uh, which is evergreen. And if you add in other factors, contains the word blog uh, no more than twice, contains the word family no more than three times, you can actually get even more confident in that prediction. Over here on the other side of the tree, uh, is the complementary set of documents that contains the word recipe no more than once. And I can follow this thick line down the tree. That means a lot of documents are flowing uh, through this set of rules. And as I do that, you can see the confidence increases while the number of documents that are covered by this set of rules decreases. We say the um, confidence is going up while the support goes down. And I end up here with a collection of documents uh, that is mostly class 0, which is ephemeral. And you can see that about 76% uh, of the time, the document that has these attributes on the right is going to be class 0, which is ephemeral. And so uh, these attributes are the document doesn't contain the word salt, food, recipe, category isn't health, uh, the text of the website doesn't contain slice, and so on. So you can see we're getting some pretty good signal out of this model. Now I want to figure out how accurate it is. To do this, I'm going to go back to my data set. And I'm going to split it into training and test with a single mouse click. So there we go. I've just created an 80% training set that I'm going to train a new model on. I'm holding out 20% to evaluate this model. So I'm just going to do one click model again, this time on the 80% training set. And there we have it. We have another model, again, this time on the 80% training set. And I'm going to click Evaluate. And it defaults to evaluating using the other 20% of the data. I just click a button. And now we're taking that 20% and making predictions on the model we trained on the other 80%. And it tells me 
that this model predicts evergreen or ephemeral with about 74% accuracy. And I can actually compare that to just guessing based on the most common class. And I can see that my model is uh, doing much better than just random guessing. Well, that's great. But what if I want to increase this accuracy using ensembles? Well, it turns out that's only a few mouse clicks. So I'm going to go back to my data set, go back to my 80% training set. And instead of doing one click model, I'm going to do one click ensemble. And this defaults to uh, an ensemble of 10 trees uh, using bootstrap aggregating. Uh, if you want, you can set the number of trees yourself, and you can also uh, decide to use a random forest instead of just bagging. So you can see it's training these 10 models. And it actually shows you the progress of each individual model. And look at how fast it plows through that. You've already got three models trained. Okay, so now we've got all 10 models trained, and that didn't take much time at all. And I'm just going to do evaluate, just like I did before. BigML automatically defaults to the holdout set for evaluation. I click a button, and it tells me the accuracy uh, on this new ensemble that I just created. And there we go. And we can see we actually get a slight boost in accuracy uh, to 76%. And I can actually compare the evaluation I just ran. And you can see that we got a couple points accuracy boost uh, by using the ensemble. And so from start to end, that took less than eight minutes uh, to actually upload the data set, train a model, uh, break it into training and test, uh, compute the accuracy on a single tree, compute the accuracy on an ensemble, and if I want to, I can go back and I can actually train uh, an ensemble on 100% of the data. So just to bring things uh, full circle, I'm going to actually train an ensemble on 100% of the StumbleUpon data, and then I'm going to actually submit uh, a batch of scores to Kaggle uh, to see how well my model stacks up against the competition. So you'll notice I've uh, taken the liberty of downloading the uh, test set for StumbleUpon. This is a holdout set where we're not told the label. And I'm going to use this test set to generate a batch of predictions uh, that I'm going to submit to Kaggle. But first, I need to train a model. So I'm going to do one-click ensemble on the training set. And again, you can uh, see the BigML really cranks through uh, this ensemble of 10 models very quickly. And now that I have my ensemble, I'm going to use what's called a batch prediction. And this is so I can. Uh, submit my results to Kaggle and uh, have them evaluated. So I'm going to do batch prediction. And we're going to use the StumbleUpon test set. And I know that the output is supposed to look a certain way. It's supposed to have headers. And we're also supposed to include the URL ID and this is a format that Kaggle will understand. We'll call this prediction stumble final. And I click the predict button. And now BigML is taking uh, all those holdout data points that we don't have the label for. These are the data points uh, that Kaggle is going to judge us on in terms of how well we predict. And uh, BigML is uh, scoring those data points using the model. Here's a little preview. I'm going to download this prediction. It's just a CSV file. Then I'm going to go over to Kaggle. I'm just going to drag this in here. And I'm going to click Submit. And Kaggle is thinking about it.
and there we go. And it turns out that with just a few minutes of work, I was able to beat uh, the random forest benchmark uh, of uh, 0.767 with a score of 0.778. And uh, this is not actually an accuracy score. This is uh, the area under the curve, the ROC curve. Um, but pretty amazing that I can press a few buttons and beat the random forest benchmark in Kaggle.